Good evening, my name is Ilana Bito and I'm the Director of Marketing and Legal Affairs at the Epilepsy Foundation of Florida. And we're coming to you live from Knox Medical in Windsor Garden, Florida, where we're outside the Knox Medical Lab and Nursery for part two of our Medical Cannabis All Access webinar. On August 30th, during part one of our series, we took you through a behind the scenes look at a medical cannabis dispensary, showcased different product options, and answered your questions regarding the current laws, regulations, and procedures related to medical cannabis. Tonight, we are bringing you to the source of it all. Alex Carroll, Knox Medical's lead chemical engineer, and Bruce Knox, founder and owner of Knox Medical, will be taking us on, a, on an exclusive tour of where medical cannabis is grown, cultivated, processed, and created from plant to product. Very few individuals get to see what you're about to see tonight. So I want to thank Knox Medical for sponsoring tonight's webinar and welcoming us into your facility with open arms and all access pass. Let me tell you a little bit about our tour guide. As long as Alex can remember, he wanted to be a doctor. Aside from maintaining a 3.96 GPA at the University of Florida, he was elected vice president of the largest American Medical Student Association chapter in the country during his second semester. His involvement carried over to Tufts University, where he breathed new life into the program by co-founding the Sherwood Project, which provides free healthcare services to underprivileged people as well as organizing field trips to notable medical conferences throughout the Northeast. However, it was only after applying to medical school that he realized his two, true passion was research. After graduating from Tufts in 2007 with a bachelor's in biomedical engineering and biopsychology, Alex relocated back to Orlando, where he was fortunate to join a team of prominent scientists performing research in immunology, which led to his interest in alternative medicine. His thirst for remaining on the edge of alternative medicine has led Alex into a direct shot with cannabinoids. It wasn't long before Alex discovered how powerful the chemicals found in the marijuana plant are in treating numerous diseases, some of which are very personal to him. Alex hopes to bring his scientific expertise and charisma to promote and advance the research of cannabinoids in treating those, including his own mother, who is struggling with early onset Alzheimer's, about the safer, more efficient, and cheaper way of treating their disease. Bruce Knox is president of Knox Nursery, which is a second-generation family-owned nursery based here in Central Florida. Knox Nursery is a classic American success story. Established on the family porch by Bruce's parents in 1962, the company was built on the bedrock values of hard work and integrity. A successful small business owner employing many Floridians, Bruce has steadily expanded over the years. Today, the nursery is one of the largest in the United States, maintaining over 700,000 square feet of greenhouse space, producing 30,000 separate lines of items. There are no tractors or trailers on the property as the facility is administered in an environmentally conscious manner. Bruce has always put the consumer first and is constantly working toward improving and streamlining operations to ensure maximum customer satisfaction. So tonight we want you to please remember to consult your doctor regarding any and all of the information discussed on tonight's webinar. The Epilepsy Foundation of Florida does not support or endorse any specific treatment or company, but rather is an advocate for a strong doctor-patient relationship. Okay, let's start the tour. I'm really excited. We're going to go meet with Alex, the lead chemical engineer, and Bruce Knox, the founder and owner of Knox Medical. Let's go take a look. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hi, Alex. Hi, nice Bruce. to see you. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm really excited to be here today. I wanted everyone to give Alex and Bruce a nice Facebook welcome with lots of likes, shares, and comments throughout the whole webinar. All right, so where are we? Can you talk a little bit about this first room in the nursery? Sure. We're in the, uh, the mother stock house, and uh, basically we maintain um, the genetics of all of our mothers. We only want to have uh, mothers in our entire facility and uh, no males. We don't want any pollen in our facility. So when you say mothers, you're talking about the plants? The plants, yes. Okay, so these are all the plants where all the rest of the plants are cloned from? That is correct. Okay. So we would come in here and we would take a, uh, a stem cutting off of this plant. So we would just uh, uh, take this plant and cut it right here and then stick it in a, uh, a product called Ellie Pots to make uh, 
uh, it easier for the plant to root. Okay, and so, you're, so just explain to our viewers, plants have gender? Yes. Yeah, plants have gender. They have uh, males and females. And when you're in a breeding program, you, of course, have to have males with your females. But uh, for everything that we do here, we only want ladies. You only want the ladies, only the females. That's correct. They produce the most uh, potent medicine. And if you have males, you're going to have seeds. Okay, so to create the plant, you use a male and female plant, and then you only keep the females and continue to um, replicate those? That's correct. Okay, interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, and so are there only one type of female plant in here or different strains of plants? No, we've got lots of different strains in here. Most of them are experimental. We only have nine different uh, strains that we are uh, working with on a consistent basis uh, to produce medicine with, but we're always looking for uh, what is the uh, the next best strain that's going to give us the um, cannabinoid profile and the terpene profile which we feel is going to produce better medicine than what we may currently have. Okay, and the nursery that we're in right now is an outdoor nursery. Is there a reason, I know some people, some other companies may do indoor growing, is there a reason that you guys elected to do outdoor growing? Well, let's just clarify the, the uh, description a little bit. We are an indoor uh, grow as we're inside of a greenhouse. Okay. Uh, so a greenhouse, this is a greenhouse that's uh, covered with a light diffusing polycarbonate. Um, but uh, it is different than what uh, most growers, even here in the state, have gone into an indoor uh, growing, which is inside of a warehouse type grow, and they don't get any benefit of uh, Mother Nature's provided sunlight. So. Um, uh, myself, as a long-term grower here in the state of Florida, believe in uh, uh, the benefits of, uh, of the sun. Right, and let's talk about it a little bit because you are a second-generation farmer, yes, correct? Yes, correct. Um, and so how long have you guys been here um, in Winter Garden, Florida? Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been in business since 1962, and uh, we've been on this uh, location since 1996. Okay, wow. That's amazing. Yes. So you have a lot of experience with plants. Yes. And with this industry. In our regular business, we grow over 30,000 uh, lines of inventory, different types of plants and colors of plants and whatnot. Uh, so we have a lot of experience uh, uh, with growing many different types of plants and uh, growing them here in Florida. Uh, so we understand uh, the challenges of growing in Florida and how to, uh, you know, grow the best, highest quality uh, products for our regular customers. And then on this side of the business, it's about producing the highest quality medicine for our patients. And getting back to the mother plant, um, how long does one particular plant live for? We keep our plants, uh, you know, approximately uh, six months. Okay, and so you'll continue to clip it, replant it, and then um, continue that process. Correct. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to go to the next room of the nursery to see the entire process which the plant grows from start to finish. Let's take a look. All right, Bruce, can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here? Yeah, so basically here we, uh, we again uh, take the, the cutting off of the mother plant uh, like we saw in the other room, and uh, uh, we just uh, stick it uh, again in a proprietary uh, product uh, uh, for a rooting process. It takes uh, three to four weeks to root, and uh, after that point then we transplant it into our uh, final container size. Okay, now we're going to go over to the flowering room and take a look in there. Okay, so we're in the flowering room right now. Why do you call it that? Well, um, uh, cannabis is very similar to a poinsettia. It is a uh, photoperiodic plant and it requires 12 hours or less of sunlight to initiate flowering. Uh, so in this room we have, in all of our flowering rooms, we have the ability to uh, adjust day length uh, to keep it under 12 hours of, uh, of daylight so the flowering will uh, commence and then uh, run its course and then ultimately get to harvest. And so how long does a plant typically spend in this room before it's completely flowered? Uh, generally, uh, it can be anywhere from seven weeks up to uh, 11 weeks. Okay. And then where does the plant go, grow, go after it's in this state? Or at what point does it move? After it, uh, after it finishes here, it stays in this uh, one place until harvest. And then uh, it goes into the uh, processing building where it is harvested and then dried. And so you call it a flower because it's kind of like uh, creating little... Yeah, exactly. You can see the, the, the flower uh, here. And if you pull in real tight on that shot, you can see the trichomes of the flower. It looks like um, uh, crystals all over the plant. 
So we brought forward a, um, a plant that's uh, getting ready to be harvested uh, uh, very soon and you can uh, see all the trichomes on the plant which is really where the bulk of the medicine uh, resides in it. So we have brought forward uh, a plant that's getting ready to be harvested. This is one of our proprietary strains called Sejita. It's actually going to be a new release for us. Um, but uh, as you zoom in on the flower, you can really see uh, the trichome development. Um, the trichomes is really where uh, the bulk of the medicine resides at in a cannabis plant. And when you say trichomes, are you talking about that little white fuzz? Yeah, the, the white crystals that are on it. Uh, uh, again, Alex uh, talks about it. They're like the water balloons uh, of the plant. <laughs> And so are, are trichomes like this going to develop on every, the middle of every single one of these leaves? Uh, yeah, there is trichomes on the leaves, but it primarily resides in the flower. Uh, so, so this is the flower of the uh, cannabis plant. And uh, if you had a, a magnifying loop, you would just see trichomes everywhere on it. That's really cool. When we came, before we came in, um, you had us disinfect our hands and put on gloves. Why do we do that before we come into the greenhouse? Sanitation is very important to us and um, so we uh, are very um, precautious about uh, sterilizing. You stepped into foot baths which have a, um, a sterilization uh, solution uh, as well as for your hands uh, as well. So uh, we're constantly uh, sterilizing our tools, feet and hands uh, uh, periodically here. To protect the plants. Correct. Bruce, do you use any type of chemicals on the plants to protect against fungus and bacteria or insects? That's a really great question. Um, uh, here at Knox Medical, we only use OMRI certified uh, chemistries. Basically, uh, OMRI is an organic, um, organic material um, uh, review, uh, basically, and they certify all chemicals, all of the chemistries to be organic. So basically, we use only um, uh, beneficial um, funguses or we use only uh, oils and things like that. So we grow our product with uh, only organic chemistries being applied. And all of these techniques that you use to grow and maintain the plants, is this something that you've learned over you know, having your own farm for generations or is that also research based based on other countries that maybe have been growing cannabis for a while? Well, <laughs> for us here again, it's about um, creating the highest quality medicine for our patients. And we don't want to go to a spray cabinet and just use any nuclear options. So for me, it's caused uh, my background to really expand in understanding what are safe chemistries to use and what are not uh, safe products to use. Um, so we, we look for, uh, again, that uh, OMRI certified uh, products and uh, they have been reviewed and uh, deemed as um, uh, organic. So that's what we look for in any uh, chemicals or fungicides that are applied to our products. Now we're going to head to the processing room to see the next part of the process. Okay, so now we're in the drying room, which is in the cultivation building. And as you can see behind, there's um, a bunch of different plants kind of being dried out. Can you kind of talk about where we are and what's going on here? Yep, so we have uh, left the greenhouse. Again, we went through the uh, mother stock house. We went through the clone process. Uh, we went through the flowering uh, cycle. And again, after 7 to 11 weeks of uh, flowering, we then uh, cut the plant off and hang dry it. So it's very similar to like how a tobacco plant is processed. So um, it's cut off at the base and then hung dry. It hang dries for three to five days. Uh, and then uh, when it's at the proper um, uh, humidity level inside of that um, uh, flower mass, uh, then we go ahead and process it. Okay, so when do you know once it's finished and ready to go? Is it just the, the time limit or does it look any differently? It feels differently. Okay. Yep, so uh, you know, you just touch it and you know how crisp it is and, and whatnot uh, is how we determine that at this point. Okay, and then once you take it from this room, where does it go? Well, it goes um, uh, into a process uh, where it's decarboxylated. Uh, we decarboxylate all of our product, and Alex is going to talk more in depth about that. Uh, and then, you know, the lab process really starts. But okay. one of the things I really do want to mention is that um, 
again, to produce the highest quality medicine for our patients. Uh, the, we do potency testing and analysis of our plants at every step of the way. So even in the greenhouse, our lab determines when we uh, process and harvest a plant. So, okay. And so Alex will talk a little bit more about that. So can you tell when it's in the plant state whether it has higher CBD or THC um, in the, the plant itself, or is that only in the lab? That's, that's only in the lab primarily, but of course, through our own genetics and our stable of proprietary genetics to Knox Medical, we know what a strain should produce. We should know that it should produce 20% uh, CBD and less than 0.8 tenths of a percent of uh, THC. Okay, and so you have those percentages for each strain and you already know what it should be yielding. Exactly. Oh, so interesting. Okay, so from here is where the processing then begins. So we're going to go meet Alex, the lead chemical engineer here at Knox Medical, so he can walk us through that process. All right, so now we're in the kitchen and we're all geared up with a lab coat and goggles for protective purposes. Right. Um, Alex, can you talk a little bit about what's behind you? Right, so this is a industrial kitchen here, uh, still under development. We're basically going to be utilizing this not only for the decarboxylation process of our product, we're also going to be utilizing this uh, kitchen hopefully for edibles in the near future. Um, right now we're utilizing the oven back here for decarboxylating the product. And decarboxylation basically is known as activation of the THC and the CBD molecules. In its natural state in the flower, those molecules have an acid branch attached to them, which makes them highly polar. It gives the molecules a distinct head and a tail. And by being so polar, those molecules have a difficult time leaving the bloodstream into the necessary organs. In fact, uh, a THCA molecule, which is the natural form of THC found in a cannabis plant, will not bypass the blood-brain barrier. So it does not provide the psychoactive benefits of that medicine. So by simply applying, applying heat to your product, you actually break away this acidic chain, the carboxyl group of the molecules, converting that into carbon dioxide. And what you're left with is a more spherical, uh, radially uh, symmetrical spherical uh, molecule that has an easy time bypassing the phospholipid bilayers of the blood system, bypassing the blood-brain barrier, and providing the full medicinal properties of the medicine. So it's an important component of the operation, and we do it before any other process in our processing department. So from in here, the, the, the plant is still in the bud and leaf property. Uh, we'll then grind it up, and we'll get ready for the extraction component of the operation. That's great. So once you grind it, where does it then go? Then it goes straight to the uh, extraction room, uh, which uh, will tell you guys a little bit about the technology that we're applying and, uh, and why we feel is the best in the state and arguably in the country. Um, you know, Florida requires that we do everything uh, derived from oil because it's the only way that you can accurately get uh, a concentration of your product. When you're dealing with flowers, you can have flowers that are located in the top of the plant that come in at much higher potency than those located in the middle, and especially those located in the bottom of the plant. So when a doctor now tells you to take 20 milligrams of medicine a day, it's impossible basically for you to do it utilizing a flower. However, when you're extracting the oil, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, you can then just take a single drop out of that oil and you can get a pretty accurate representation of what that oil actually consists of. Okay, and so can we head over there and you can show us the whole let's process? Go. All right, let's go. All right, so Alex, what is this super noise machine behind us? <laughs> this is a custom built supercritical CO2 extractor. Um, I, it, you know, I, you guys constantly throughout this presentation have uh, been, we have been using the term proprietary, but it really is true. Uh, we have set out to do a lot. We want to make sure that we're providing the highest level of product to our patients. And we've invested money to ensure that we're using the highest technology in each component of the operation, not only in cultivation, as well as processing. And whenever that technology isn't still sufficient out there, well, we then put more funding behind it to make sure that we have zero obstacles when it comes to, for example, our extraction component. So this system is a one-of-a-kind system. There's none like this in the rest of the world. And the reason why we chose supercritical CO2 is because even though it's the most costly proposition to having a large scale uh, production, it is the highest level of purity that you can get. Um, you know, a lot of our competitors we know are using things such as uh, uh, you know, hydrocarbon extractions, uh, some are using alcohol extractions, and you know, the solvents that they're utilizing can be toxic at high amounts. Now, there is a purging process 
uh, required for them to purify their oil, but no matter how much they attempt to purge it, there is molecules of those hydrocarbons, specifically butane or, or you know, alcohols, that are tightly bound to the CBD and THC molecules. And even though you put it through as rigorous of a process for purging it out, there's a distinct taste and a smell to that oil. We're not in the recreational market. So for us, again, we're not uh, in, in, adding any artificial flavoring or anything that doesn't meet the all natural standards when it comes to produ production of our oil. Because as I mentioned earlier, Having the highest quality oil allows us then to have the highest quality of medicine. You know, if you start, you can make a, a gold, you can turn spoil gold, but you can't make gold out of garbage. So that's the kind of foundation we use here. So, you know, you guys saw a lot of uh, really advanced technologies in our greenhouse. Well, you're going to see that it carries on until the package is finally made. So when you say you use CO2, what does that really mean with regard to this machine? Right. When it comes to extractions of oils, you need to use solvents, which will basically, in nature, just pull the cannabinoids, terpenoids, uh, out of the plant material. So the winterization process entails the addition of ethanol to the product. The reason why everyone uses ethanol for this process is because it's not toxic to humans. Uh, it's present in everyday items like toothpaste, uh, Listerine, cough medicine, and things of that sort. And ethanol actually in its room temperature has both polar and nonpolar properties, which means it directly homogenizes with anything that's introduced to it. So once it goes from the pressurizing machine into the freezer, into one of those mason jars, how do you know when it's ready to come out and go into the speaker? Right, so just like the decarboxylation process, everything is a function of heat and time. So the colder you apply uh, a temperature into this process, the shorter your incubation time is required. So we have uh, applied one of the coldest temperatures you can get in a commercial freezer uh, to speed up this process. We are not only doing tests like potency and terpenes analysis here, but we're also testing for pesticides, even though we don't use any here. Uh, we are testing for it, and we've invested in the highest technology to handle that test. We're also testing for residual solvents to ensure that things such as the ethanol is fully purged from our system. We're also testing for microbiologicals, we're testing for mycotoxins, and we're testing for heavy metals, all out of this laboratory here. And there's multiple equipment that allows us to perform each one of these tests. And what does it do back here? Is that a scale? It's actually a, it looks like a scale. It's actually a magnetic stirring plat platform. It uh, heats up the oil so that it ensures homogeneity, uh, but it also stirring the product to ensure that it's fully homogenized. This is the part of the, op the operation that we're running the analytical testing, and most importantly, this is when we start formulating the medicine through the different product forms. It's at this step here that the product is in its highest concentration. So if we're going to have any issues such as residual solvents or potency of our uh, heavy metals or anything, this will be the time that it will display that. So we will start the, anal anal the anal analyses of all our products at this stage. Once everything passes muster, we can then continue on to the formulation part of the application. Are these two they are. To the right side, we have one of our uh, best sellers, the Odra, uh, here, which is a constant strain that we're constantly pushing out. As Bruce mentioned, we're developing multiple strains here, but we're focusing on nine to ten strains as our primary strains. We want to provide multiple strains under each umbrella of uh, indica, a hybrid, a sativa, and a CBD, because we understand that every patient has different body chemistries. Because a particular strain, a, terp a terpenoid profile might be beneficial for you and effective for you, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be effective for the other person. So, unlike a lot of our competition, we're actually providing multiple options within each other. Can you go over that in a little bit more detail uh, for our viewers? What are you mentioned four categories. Can right. you kind of break it down for us? Sure. Uh, we have the, the CBD category, uh, which uh, was the primary category uh, for the Office of Compassionate Use program here in Florida. Um, and it's a really efficient category for you know, treating things such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and things of that sort. It provides no psychoactive effects, so it's really appropriate for you know, elderly and kids. Uh, however, you know, there are some symptoms that do require a little bit of a psychoactive uh, aspect to it, and that's where the THC products really provide that relief. Within the THC products, we have uh, sativas, we have indicas, and then we have a hybrid, which is a mixture of both. The sativas, indicas, hybrids, those are uh, really dictated by the terpenoid profile. So terpenes 
are basically molecules that are present in the cannabis plant. They're actually present in numerous other plants as well, such as cocoa, uh, oranges, limes, and things of that sort. And they, they provide some of the effects that the medicine uh, uh, contains. So whether the medicine is gonna be a sedating medicine compared to uh, an euphoric medicine, that would be dictated more towards the terpene profile rather than the cannabinoid profile. And then you also have other effects such as being a uh, appetite stimulant versus an appetite suppressant, uh, you know, uh, creativity inducing, you know, things of that sort are more dictated towards its terpenoid profiles. And again, we have multiple strains under each one of these categories to ensure that each patient has the best medicine that works for them. So depending on the strain, do you recommend certain strains for certain um, diseases or conditions? Right, so you know, when a patient interacts with a doctor, uh, it's a doctor's responsibility in talking, communicating with the patient to determine whether that patient is going to be receiving a CBD uh, a medicine or a THC, medicinal cannabis medicine. And that doctor then, through his own diligence, will recommend a specific dosage to the patient where he or she should start off at. The system then will extrapolate that to a number of days, and the patient will come to our dispensary or call our call center uh, with an amount of a balance, basically, that they're uh, entitled to receive. Uh, that recommendation lasts, I believe, now a period of 70 days. So then the patient has to interact again with the doctor to redo that and refill that uh, balance. And I just want to mention again, like Alex said, everything that you're hearing today, you should consult your doctor. Yes. Discuss everything here. And, um, you know, as you mentioned at the beginning, we uh, subscribe to a dom strong doctor-patient relationship. So regarding all the information and all the products that you see here on today's webinar, please consult your doctor and discuss everything. Correct. So at this point here, we can, I'd say maybe half a day to a day, uh, is however long it stays here. And uh, once again, once the test passes muster, we then start diluting our product down. We only use medium chain triglycerides as our daily one, which is a coconut source. It's basically extra virgin olive oil. What, it, what that is to olive oil, uh, MCT oil is to coconut oil. And uh, you know, the entire industry, even the recreational market, after starting seeing the benefits of MCT oil compared to things such as propylene glycol or vegetable glycerin, they started shifting towards only utilizing MCT oil. And for us, as it stands right now, all our product form, that's the only deal that we have. We're not using any glycerols, we're not using any artificial flavoring. Our product is all natural from beginning to end, from the extraction to how we formulate it at the end as well. And from a scientific standpoint, um, how do you know which strains are the most uh, productive and the best for your patients? Um, has there been any testing done, or how, how do you guys determine? We are, you know, it was one of the benefits of uh, uh, Knox, I believe, hiring people such as myself and uh, you know, Jimmy and Mark. We have over 40 years of, uh, uh, of experience in chemistry coming into the laboratory and we're operating our extractors and handling our decarboxylation component of the operation. So we're applying the scientific method to everything that we do here. We're really logging all the parameters uh, down to the strain, the weights, uh, you know, temperatures, pressures, everything. And we're looking at trend analysis by our proprietary softwares to ensure that specific strains should be looked more deeply into and other strains should not be. Uh, everything is done in-house, uh, and then we do have some feedback programs with our patients where they'll communicate some of their effects and everything, and we take note of that as well. You mentioned a little bit at the beginning, and we also discussed this in part one, that um, edibles are the foreseeable future. What does that look like from a lab perspective? Yeah, for the laboratory, uh, it doesn't, it wouldn't change much, you know. This laboratory uh, is uh, certified to be FDA compliant. Uh, in, was again one of the reasons we scored the highest license in the state, the highest scoring license in the state, is because of the level of compliance that we were applying to every step of the operation. So this laboratory, we are, uh, you know, take, going above and beyond uh, in making sure that everything is uh, FDA approved, even though the FDA has no uh, regulation in this industry. So can you talk a little bit about why the product has to be Sure. Uh, again, we're not a recreational uh, industry here in the state. We're not looking to provide the most potent product to the patient. We are more concerned in providing an easy-to-take medicine to the patient. We're diluting all our products. We either provide 
one milligram or two milligrams, whether the patient is taking a 300 milligram cartridge or a 600 milligram cartridge as their form of administration. So we're basically trying to facilitate for a patient when a doctor tells them to take 20 uh, milligrams of, uh, uh, of a THC product a day, they can either take 20 inhalations or some patients prefer to dose themselves a little bit less. Well, they can buy the 600 milligram product and only take 10 inhalations. Same thing with our subliminal drops. We want to provide a consistent dose. We put a lot of effort in ensuring that our product is a very tight concentration throughout. We basically, we're all multi-jurisdictional. Uh, we also have uh, licenses in Texas and Puerto Rico. So we're taking this level of diligence outside of state borders and ensuring that when a patient takes an outdoor medication in Florida, and for some reason that patient wants to relocate to Texas, they can expect the same effect from that product. And so if a patient uses a particular product one week and then they use it again in a month, it would have the same potency because of the way that you guys regulate everything here, even though it would be a different batch of things. Correct. All our that's the, one of the biggest questions we get from patients is, uh, which one is the strongest one? And we then start educating them and telling them that regardless of the strength, regardless of the potency of the oil that is extracted out of our machine, we normalize all those potencies across the board to provide either 300 or 600 milligrams of medicine. And I know that your products actually have like a vial that part and like measurements on it. Correct. And so that's how patients could then know exactly how much to take out. Exactly. Depending exactly. on what their doctor prescribes, of course. Right. For the sublingual drops in the beginning, we didn't provide the graduations, and we got a lot of feedback once again from patients asking, well, I'm having to take 20 drops or 30 drops at a single dose. Can you provide a graduation on your dropper? And it was a no brainer for us. We have started doing that, I believe, for six months now. And uh, we got a lot of positive feedback for that. Because, you know, it's some patients really have a really small dosage depending on the symptom that they have, and then you have patients such as epilepsy patients, uh, which require much higher doses. So we want to really provide uh, support to all uh, parties involved. So it's, it's one of the ways that we're listening to our population, uh, population base and taking notes and applying what we do. Okay, so Alex, once it's done, you begin um, in this process, where does it go from there? So from here, we, after we completed all the analytical testing that we were set for to do, you know, potency terpenes, residual solvents, microbiologicals, mycotoxins, heavy metals, and pesticides, we then will package this, we'll put it in pneumatic syringes, and we hand it off the packaging so that it's loaded on from either cartridges or something with drops. And uh, these are what those product forms look like. We were actually uh, the first in the state to provide uh, THC, CBD, and CBN contents on every label. It is now part of the regulation, so every uh, dispense organization should provide this information. But this is, again, one of the ways that we were doing things ahead of the competition and ahead of what was asked to us because we knew that the benefit of that would provide to the patient. So CBN is, uh, is uh, one of the 113 different cannabinoids. Uh, I mean, it could be higher now. Every week you check, there's more cannabinoids discovered. Uh, but, you know, the THC and the CBD are the star players. They are the most prevailing cannabinoids present in the flower. Um, they're also the ones that have been linked to due to research to provide the most medicinal relief. Uh, however, CBN, I would say, is the third uh, most uh, important cannabinoid in and where it provides a lot of a sleep aid, for example. It has a very strong sedating effect. Uh, the indica strains provide a lot of CBN naturally, and uh, the, all the strains, the THC, actually will convert itself into CBN once the plant is ripened. So Bruce mentioned earlier how we know the plant is ready for harvesting. And a lot of people are looking at the physical characteristics of the plant, so they're looking at amperings of the trichomes to determine, okay, this one is ready to go. But here in Ox, we're actually taking it to another level. We're looking at microscopically and looking at CBN's proliferation to come in. Because the more CBN's that are coming in, that's indication that THC is being sacrificed for that. But even though we, we don't really dilute our product for CBNs or CBGs or CBDBs. We are testing for all those other cannabinoids, for nine of them, in-house, and we are keeping tabs on all of them. And uh, we provide a consolidated certificate of analysis with all the analytical testing for every batch here. And this is available for doctors and patients alike. So they can see exactly how much of what is uh, in each product here. When you say test, what does that mean? Testing means the analytical analysis that we provide. So whether we're doing cannabinoid profiling, 
utilizing high pressure liquid chromatography or where we're looking at terpene content, utilizing gas chromatography. Tests, we, in, we symbolize a specific type of testing that we do. Okay, so are you putting the product into the under microscope? Are you putting it in a machine? How, when you say testing, you go into the Sure. For, uh, you know, the majority of testing, uh, we're basically just getting a small amount of it, sometimes 100 micrograms or uh, 1 ml, depending on the type of testing that you're doing. And then you're uh, diluting that to a specific concentration and push, putting it on your system for analysis. Uh, unfortunately, there's not one system that handles all the analysis um, that we require. Uh, each uh, system, uh, whether it's a mass spectrometer, um, uh, handles a specific level of molecules. And then you, got, you have your gas chromatography equipment, which handles a broader range of molecules. So each system is really good at doing a specific type of analysis. So we utilize four systems here to handle all the seven different types of analysis that we have set for until we get to these final forms of medicine. So currently we're selling us uh, vaporizer cartridges and we're selling sublingual drops. And we wanted to come off, come out of the market selling these two types of medicine because they both behave very differently in the body. Uh, the vaporizer cartridge provides an immediate effect and immediately bypasses the blood-brain barrier. So it allows the patient to have an almost immediate effect and relief from their symptoms. However, it has a much lower absorbance rate, which then means that it stays in your system for a fewer onset time. So you're looking at maybe an hour or two, maybe three hours of relief. With a sublingual drop, for example, now you're having a longer onset time. So it takes anywhere from a half an hour to an hour, depending on the patient. And that stays in your system for a period of four to six hours. So depending on the symptom that the patient has, one form is more ideal to another. Uh, epilepsy patients, for example, they really gravitate towards sublingual drops or capsules, uh, some type of an ingestion type of medicine where they're going to have uh, a longer presence of those cannabinoids in their system because they're not looking to uh, uh, alleviate a seizure from occurring. They're looking at preventing that seizure from occurring. And the way to do that is by having specific CBD molecules present in your system at all times. So we would steer them away from uh, vaporizing cartridges and more towards the sublingual drops or capsules or things of that sort. However, depending on the symptom, some PTSD patients, for example, uh, we have a lot of Crohn's disease patients that prefer to vaporize a cartridge where they can dose themselves as needed and provide themselves with relief for the specific amount of time that they require. Okay, Alex, can you talk about what these uh, sure. items are right here? Oh, sure. These are our vaporizer batteries. Uh, they're provided free of charge to first-time patients. And this is the apparatus that they would utilize with our vaporizer cartridge. It's just a simple matter of screwing on their cartridge which provides the oil support into this chamber here, and then pressing the button as they're inhaling. Uh, again, we dilute all our products. We're not trying to sell the most potent product out there. We're selling a consistent dose so that when you inhale for a period of two to three seconds, you're receiving either one milligram of medicine or two milligrams of medicine if you're taking a 600 milligram cartridge. So we normalize everything to ensure an even dosage per inhalation of the product. So this is also available for sale uh, at our dispensaries. Uh, I believe they're $60. And I know that you guys are currently dispensing uh, is there anything else that you guys are working on? Oh yeah, we're uh, in the current development of uh, capsules, of, uh, of lotions. Uh, we're currently development of uh, uh, suppositories, transdermal patches, and the works. Uh, we're almost close to capsules. We didn't want to use the public as our guinea pig. Um, you know, much like our sublingual drops and cartridges, we really wanted to iron out all the kinks and issues that it comes with um, before we start pushing more product out to the patients. But we're really close. We, be, we will be soon having uh, lotions available for topical relief, uh, you know, for itching relief, for arthritis and things of that sort. Uh, we're also really close to finalizing our suppositories, which are very popular uh, medicinal forms in the West Coast. Uh, but we're currently developing new things, and uh, once we're satisfied with the result, then we invest in uh, the packaging and things of that sort before we can push it out to the public. So one question that we get a lot from our clients and our viewers is, what makes your CBD product, for example, different than the one that you buy to over the counter or order online? Right. So, you know, the CBD products that you get uh, over the counter, uh, or online for that matter, uh, are comprised of hemp. Uh, strains of cannabis and those strains even though they're in the same family uh, of plants 
they're really low, almost non-existent with other cannabinoids, uh, specifically THC, uh, CBN, CBGs, and things of that sort. And as I mentioned earlier, these other cannabinoids, they provide an entourage effect, which without them, the CBD molecules themselves aren't efficient. It's uh, almost better for you to have uh, a lower dosage of CBD coming from a cannabis plant. It's more effective than you having a uh, two, three, five-fold uh, CBD uh, product from a hemp or a plant because of the lack, not only of those other cannabinoids, even though they're in the fraction, they're trace amounts, they're still there and they maximize the effects of CBD. Uh, and more specifically to the terpene profiles. Uh, you know, a lot of people are using CBD products to provide relief uh, from things such, you know, a sleep, uh, insomnia, and things of that sort. Terpenes are a huge contributor to that. And again, the terpene, terpene, you know, profile is not nearly as rich as those from the cannabis sativa, indicas, and hybrid strains. Okay, so I think that uh, just about wraps up our webinar. Alex, can you kind of give us an overview of what we saw and walked through today from the plant to the final product? Sure. So, uh, what you guys have seen is a, a state-of-the-art facility uh, really applying a lot of uh, unique and uh, the highest, uh, most robust technologies in each component of the operation. You guys saw um, our greenhouse, um, you know, the direction of going greenhouse compared to indoors because we feel it provides a richer plant. Uh, you know, nothing can really replicate the power of the sun, as Bruce has mentioned. Um, and then uh, the diligence that we're putting it through, you know, how we decarboxylate the product, uh, the technologies that we're applying uh, in the extraction by choosing to go super critical CO2 compared to hydrocarbon and alcohol extractions. And then all the analytical testing that we do here, uh, which again, is not only uh, unique to, I believe, the state, but really to the entire market. Um, a lot of the analytical testing that you, we mentioned here are something that uh, other markets will actually rely on. Uh, independent laboratories to be able to provide that level of analysis. We're doing everything out of this laboratory alone. Um, so that's something I think, uh, I, I really hope that the patients and the public can see that we're really applying the highest level of technologies and we're not really um, skipping any corners to be able to provide the highest level of medicine for the patients. So I just want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank Alex for giving us this technical information. I want to thank Bruce joined us at the beginning and gave us an all-access class into the Knox Medical Laboratory. Very few people get to see what everyone got to see today. I want to thank Knox Medical for sponsoring this webinar and to everyone for joining us on Facebook Live. Again, if you missed any part of this, it will be available on our website and it will be available on Facebook for you to view and share with your friends and family. Thank you so much and from Knox Medical in Florida, good night. Bye-bye.